Well, had a few questions about CCTV and the best way to install and what it's meant to do. So let's get on with it. Welcome to Grey Matters. Hello and welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generation still matters and looks at issues that matter to the older generation. Now, I've had a few questions about CCTV and um, the best way to install and what you need to look out for and pitfalls and so on. So I thought I'd just pop it down in a, in a brief video now uh, so we can, we can look at those issues. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe, and if you do subscribe, then hit that bell so that you can stay notified of future content. Thank you. Now, you'll remember, hopefully, in a previous video, I said that um, there are basically no limitations as to what you can do with domestic CCTV in terms of legislation. They're currently, as of December 2020, no legislation that controls domestic CCTV. Now we talked about the right to privacy um, under the Human Rights Act, that comes under the right to family life and so on. The Human Rights Act is designed to protect the population from an oppressive state. So it actually only applies to the government and to official government bodies and schools and hospitals and um, places like that. Um, you as an individual cannot breach another individual's human rights. So the fact that you have your camera looking over your neighbor's garden in itself is not an offense. Um, but a policeman could still get you into a bit of trouble over that by using the Harassment Act um, in the fact that you're causing your neighbor alarm, harassment and distress. And that's certainly the route I would take if I wanted to stop someone upsetting their neighbours. So it's generally best to avoid uh, your camera looking into your neighbour's garden. When it comes to the street, uh, there's no legislation there either. I would avoid being contentious. I would avoid looking uh, over at children's playgrounds and schools and things like that. The only reason you would have to look at the street is if your car is parked out there, for example, or if you can't avoid looking at some of it when you're looking at the front of your property. Uh, and that, that's quite legitimate. You're not covered by the Data Protection Act either. You don't have to worry about that because that only applies if you're a business or an organisation and you're keeping CCTV data um, as part of your business, in which case you would need to register with the uh, Information Commissioner's Office. Probably the most important thing you need to do is to decide what you want your CCTV camera or cameras to do. It might sound obvious. Well, I want it to look at my property, protect my property. I want to see what's going on. And I want to be able to give the footage to the police and get somebody arrested. You're actually asking too much of one camera for that. You're asking one camera to look at your property and to give you good enough definition of a person that you can give it to the police and the police can say, right, we'll go and find that person, we'll circulate that picture. There's four principles, but three that we need to worry about. That's observation, recognition, and identification. Now observation or monitoring is just looking at the widest area, seeing what's going on on your property. And that's fine. Um, most cameras are now very wide angle lenses and that's all they're really good for is looking at a wide area. Um, if you want a, a recognition, that is when the person will fill a lot more of the screen. And you could say that if you saw that man again, you would recognize him again. That is recognition. If you're wanting identification, then the image of the individual has got to fill pushing on 100% of the screen so that you can see with total clarity who that person is and anyone who sees him will be able to say, oh, that's John Smith, sorry, John, uh, or Fred Bloggs, okay? Um, now, you will not get all those three things from just one camera. The other thing we like to do is to work on pinch points. And that's a point where somebody has got to come through a driveway gate, a side gate, 
that's where you can have your camera looking and they've got to come through and you can adjust your camera to get the best possible view of everybody that comes through that gateway. Um, now with the driveway, you may want to be able to pick up a vehicle if the vehicle comes on your drive and pick up the registration number. You will probably be able to get recognition from that. You'll probably be able to zoom your camera in enough so that you get a, re a fairly good image of the person and of the vehicle. But you won't necessarily see what else they do. And that's when you will perhaps need a second camera to actually see what happens. Now, it doesn't matter too much if you can't do that, because if your camera shows that that person or those people were the only ones that came onto your property, then they must have been the ones that committed the crime. Okay? Even if you haven't got cameras to see what they did. It's always best to work with more than one camera if you can, but you do need to decide what you want each camera to do. Recognize somebody, identify somebody, or see what they're doing. Okay. Now, when you set it up, don't keep your camera too high. You don't want lots of sky in your picture. It's wasted space. All right. Open space is wasted space. Don't do it. You need your camera down sufficiently to have whatever you need above, but it's the plane below that you really need. What's going on at ground level? But any sky up there, just bring your camera down. You don't need it. The other thing you need to avoid, if you've only got one camera, is looking down on the top of people's heads. Not a lot of good to see the top of somebody's head and nothing else. You need to be able to see their face. And if the only angle you can get is the top of someone's head, then try and get yourself another camera. Maybe a video doorbell would be a good idea so that although you only see the top of someone's head in your camera, bearing in mind most burglars will knock at the door first, being opportunists and they want to make sure you're out, you will get a nice picture of their faces through the video doorbell. So keep that in mind. So having got that out of the way, let's look at some examples of CCTV. We'll start with um, public space CCTV, at least I assume it's public space um, because that's what it's filming. doesn't appear to be any um, private property there apart from the backs of those houses or those apartments, whatever they are. And obviously at this distance it's providing no security at all. Um, you can just about make out some people uh, in the foreground of that. Uh, certainly not sufficient to recognise them, certainly not to identify them. And the people walking on the boardwalk at the other side there, you couldn't recognise them. So I'm not sure what this camera is actually trying to achieve. Um, obviously it's, it's monitoring, presumably monitoring the boats and in case anyone tries to steal one or cause damage. But if they did, you would get no useful images from that at all in terms of identifying the people responsible. Maybe just hope they leave a car right in the foreground there that the camera can see. Um, let's have a look at this, this amazing one of the skylight. Now, you have to wonder what this camera is actually looking at. Have they got a vulnerable skylight? Are they expecting a cat burglar, perhaps? Um, I can't see any rhyme or reason for this camera view whatsoever. Um, it doesn't seem to be protecting anything, serving no useful purpose. Presumably the people that put it in have, have got a reason, but certainly not obvious. Um, now this is an interesting one. Um, I would imagine it's a domestic system, that it's on the side of someone's house, but it appears to be looking at the neighbour's garden, possibly, and the road. Um, if that small gateway by the little bench actually belongs to the camera owner, then I would have had the camera... Um, in line with the gate more, use it as a pinch point to see everyone that comes through it. Or is it monitoring the street? Do they have problems with vandalism down there and they're trying to catch people committing it? If so, again, you're not even going to get recognition um, at that distance. It's, um, again, it's a bit of a mystery as to what that camera's trying to achieve. Now, here's uh, a good example of a misplaced camera. Um, a good pinch point there, looking at the entrance. But most of that picture, over 
just over half of that picture is the highway and the people across the road. Um, unless that's who they're trying to, uh, to monitor, in which case the camera should be up higher and zoomed into that location. But I suspect it's their own driveway that they're trying to see, in which case that camera needs to come right down so you, you just get the, the head height of people walking past and you'd see them come onto the drive. That could be quite a useful pinch point and will probably get recognition from that uh, if it had been lowered down. Uh, so it's a shame, it's, it's badly installed in my view. Now remember what I mentioned about Sky? Um, it, what is this trying to achieve? This is a, a fairly typical example of, of CCTV when it's been installed uh, and people just d don't take any account into the environment, the surroundings and what they actually want to look at. The majority of that picture is, is just Sky. Now, if that is a weather watching camera, you could understand it perhaps. If it's a general camera looking at the beauty of the river or the bay or whatever it is, then again, you don't necessarily need um, all that sky. Maybe they're looking at sunsets, but in terms of security, absolutely useless. Now here's someone trying to achieve the right thing, protecting what I imagine is the motorbike, looking at the gate, but the camera's too high. It's far too high. You'll see the tops of their heads. You'll get no useful imagery from that whatsoever. It would be much better to bring that camera down, virtually to head height, in fact, maybe to the height of a downstairs window. Um, it doesn't matter too much if the camera is vulnerable because you'll still have the footage if anyone were to attack the camera. But the fact it's there and would be more visible would be a deterrent in itself uh, because they know if they... Uh, were to come in and try and steal the bike or break in, the, the camera's going to catch them. Now this one's quite interesting. Um, definitely sky, definitely looking upwards. What's it trying to achieve? A, a, presumably a security camera uh, in a town centre, um, but it's just not achieving anything. Um, very useful camera. Now here's quite a good example of using a pinch point. Um, that's fairly good for terms of recognition. I think if you saw that guy again on camera, you will probably recognize him. Image quality is not brilliant, but they're trying to cover the whole gate with one camera. Um, they would probably be, be better off with two, but the point is they've got it virtually right. There's no sky. It's looking down at the gate. You will get vehicles quite clearly coming in there. Whether the quality is good enough to read the number plates, particularly at that angle, uh, I don't imagine it is, but a good attempt. And as you can see, you know, fairly good for position for recognition of people. Now, <laughs> here's one uh, excellent in terms of positioning uh, to get a nice pinch point. The problem is the camera's not been maintained. It's covered in cobwebs. The second issue is that it's facing into the sun. And this is something you do need to take account of when you're installing your cameras. Is it going to be blinded by sunlight? And the third thing for this particular gate, again, it's industrial, but it's the outside of a gate. So not too useful. Um, you would get the backs of intruders, um, hopefully catch them on the way out. Uh, you wouldn't see the rear number plates of any vehicles unless they drove through the gates. But on the other side, much better. That's the same gate, but from the inside, not facing into the sun. Um, you would get fairly good images of people there. I would probably have just zoomed in a little bit more just to get better definition of facial features of anyone walking through. Um, or maybe even bring the camera down a little bit more so that as they walk past or drive past, you're going to get uh, a better view of them and better um, imagery of the number plate, but not bad, really. If you've got the ability of having three cameras, then it's a good idea to have the camera at the front of your house providing a general view, an observational view of what's going on then the side gate or whatever the route is for the for you or anyone else to get round to the back of your house 
have a camera there treating that as a pinch point where you get a good picture of the personal people as they come through to go around to the back and then a third camera at the back which gives a reasonable close view of the back of your house to see what they're doing. Again, it doesn't matter so much if you get the top of their heads there because you're looking down, but you want to be able to see what they're doing. And it's also very useful for the police because it will see the MO of the, of the, the, the um, offenders, the modus operandi, how they actually break in. And they might even recognize who's involved by the methods they use to break into the house. They do tend to have their favorite means. So three cameras generally would be ideal. And they are, don't forget, quite cheap now. I mean, 30 quid upwards. Um, if you're self-installing, self they all operate off your phone. You can adjust them from your phone. You can move them from your phone. You can zoom them in and out. Uh, and the technology is just quite astounding. If you can afford to have it, professionally supplied and installed then do so because they will know exactly um, how to do it but also they will know how to get the best out of the system and the best system for your requirements and that means you need to know your requirements work out your operational requirements decide having spoken to the engineers of the surveyor how many cameras you're going to get decide what you want each one to be able to do monitoring, identification, recognition, and ensure that they provide a system that will provide that for you. you. Get a chance and you get a chance to have a look at the cameras you're going to use in action. Ask them to show you how they're working, uh, see the images from them. Nothing worse than those pictures that we see uh, on television of, of um, shoplifters and burglars where you can see nothing, it's so badly blurred. Uh, you need a good camera. You also need to keep them clean. Get yourself an extending feather duster and keep away those flipping spiders and their spiders webs. Cause no end of havoc uh, with cameras. Okay, this is just a quick dive into it. It is quite a complex subject, but I'm happy to answer any questions if you want to leave a comment uh, and I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for joining me. The next video should be if all goes well, um, about intruder alarms. And we'll look if we get a chance in that video, if not on the next one, on safes and looking after the property actually in your home. Uh, so do join me for those. Those one or two videos will be the last in the series of basic home security advice. Um, so I hope you know, you've, you've found them useful. I've been getting a lot of comments that, that suggest you have been, which is great. And certainly after Christmas, we will try to resume our interviews with, with people who have um, retired and the sort of ways they've retired and the things they've been looking at. Adding to the list of people to speak to now, a guy called Graham Cooper, who has turned from a career that he's still doing, running his own business, but he's preparing for his retirement by making the most incredible solid oak furniture. The man's a genius. So with any luck, we'll be able to visit his workshop and we'll be able to chat to him about this newfound passion uh, that will take him well into retirement and keep him very busy, I would imagine. Maybe not so much of a retirement as he thinks. So until the next time, thanks for joining us. Bye. For now.